Hey guys, it's Holly. So today I wanted to have a look at the brand new Lego Art Harry Potter set. Now this has had quite a lot of conflicting opinions. A lot of people do not like the design of this at all and only really like the combined one, which involves you purchasing four different sets. Now these retail for 120 US dollars or 180 Australian. So buying that quite a lot and a lot of people don't really see the value in this and have called it kind of the worst Lego Harry Potter set ever. I personally don't think that's the case. I actually quite enjoyed the look of all of the individual sets. My personal favorites include Slytherin and Hufflepuff but because I'm a Gryffindor I will be building that one and look I think it's gotten a lot of hate for what it is. I definitely don't think this is the best looking art. Now, this isn't the first one I've purchased either. I did purchase the Lego Art uh, the Sith and I did a full review on that. And it sits above my desk and I really enjoy it. And the main appeal that I had with that set was the building experience. I built it with my mum, so that's kind of my plan for this set. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I just wanna see what it's like because I'm basically just a Harry Potter completionist. That's the main reason I bought this, besides the fact that I really enjoyed the build process and kind of the idea of Lego art itself. I really enjoyed that concept, which is why I bought this set. So I wanna take a close look at it and kind of let you know my thoughts on the final design because I find with these things, Firstly, they look a lot better from very far away, and secondly, they're a lot different in real life to what you see in the picture. So let's have a look at it. So here is the art all built up, and of course, because I am a Gryffindor, according to Pottermore, I have chosen the Gryffindor house crest, even though personally, I think Slytherin might be my favorite. I just think it's the most interesting, and while I do like the sort of Gryffindor there, and I think the lion design looks pretty cool, the locket to me looks better, like the sword just goes straight up and down like it's pretty boring then again I don't really see what else they really could have done for that sword design now as you can see with the lion the shading and stuff with the highlights of that kind of gunmetal silver piece isn't really that interesting I feel like Hufflepuff had the best one in that regard the shading on the lion just looks pretty half-hearted to me in all honesty and kind of going back to the sort of Gryffindor as well it's missing something to me this whole section just feels very scary skinny at the top and it's also missing the red accents on the ends which even the customized Lego piece in the Harry Potter CMF series had and there's just something noticeably missing from this build and kind of art piece. Like the sword is just missing something like literally looking at a photo of it you can see that that kind of bit at the top is more supposed to be an oval. You can kind of see it's missing a stud there and there and the bits on the end and kind of just that whole curved bit in the middle there like it's just not it's doesn't look quite right to me. It looks very skinny and very flimsy like up here. I feel like there could have been a lot more shading. This whole end section compared to this bit here looks very out of proportion to me. Now admittedly though I do really like the colors of this one. I think they all look really good. I love how you've got the gold for Gryffindor. You've got the dark red. I like the kind of white and gray checkerboard. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean it's not my favorite but like it looks good. I just I don't know. I think that kind of shiny gray section looks a bit boring. I feel like that could have been a bit more interesting. Although I get why you would want to go with a solid color because you have got that solid red panel. I don't know. Personally, I do like these four small ones. I know a lot of people just either said this was like the worst set ever because of the design of them and people have been disappointed to me. These four ones, like th they're not as great as I kind of thought they would be, but I do kind of like where it's gone. I know I've heard comments of people saying that it's not very Harry Potter-esque, like you can't really tell that this is Harry Potter, but personally, I quite like that fact. I think it's more of like her minimalistic, stylized, like nerdy object rather than BAM! I'm a massive fan of Harry Potter, which sometimes is a good thing. I know I think compared to my Star Wars mosaic, I personally like that one better than this. I just think it's a lot more eye-catching and a lot more engaging than this one. This one's very flat. Like there's not a lot of shading, there's not a lot to it, like there's not really a lot of depth and dimension which those original ones had. So here's kind of an up close look at it. As you can see, there's not a lot of like highlighting or textures or anything like that, which is kind of what I mean when I say it looks very flat and just not as interesting. 
like this whole section here is just shiny metallic silver studs and then you've got like a diagonal pattern with the sword which is just straight up and down which I can tell you was not very fun and entertaining to build it was very straightforward and kind of mind numbing to an extent. Now in the Lego art set of course you do get the big thick separator that everyone enjoys. Also in these newer ones you do get a golden crowbar which I personally think is really good that way you could just get rid of individual studs and kind of hook them out like that. Another thing that I really did like actually was getting one of each of the colors of studs and putting it on a black plate. I've seen other people talk about this and kind of be like why is this included like this is useless this is worthless but honestly after having built it with my mom who <laughs> honestly doesn't have the greatest eyesight especially in some poor lighting conditions this was extremely useful because when we were building the first one she'd always ask me like which colors number two is it is it this one or this one and she'd get kind of the grays confused so I think having this kind of little display and allowing you to kind of hold it up next to the studs that you have in different bowls and different bags is a really good thing and I'm glad that Lego's kind of learned from that and included these two things along with the build. I hope they keep doing this in the future because it's very helpful. Might not be for young people, but definitely people like my mom, or if you're building this with a family member, or you know, some older members of the Lego community who maybe don't have the best eyesight. Maybe they're building it in dark lighting conditions and can't really see very well. This is very helpful for that regard. Now, just like with the other mosaics, you can buy multiples to combine them to make a giant Hogwarts crest. And I won't be purchasing four of these. I don't think I can bring myself to spend that amount of money on something, let alone have the space to kind of display it because that's going to be massive. That's going to be four lots of these big and unlike the beetles where you would build four and kind of display them separately, these all have to be connected which makes it a lot harder to display. And even with the beetles, I was like, why would anyone purchase four of them? I think three to make like mega Iron Man and mega Darth Vader and things like that. That kind of makes sense to me. Like it's a lot more justifiable. It looks a lot better. But I guess even displaying four of these to display would look a lot better than that mega Hogwarts crest. It would certainly be a lot easier to display. So I can give it to that. But just like the original art, I really enjoyed the building process. It was a lot of fun. I like how they've designed the frame. On the back, there have been a few modifications this time. Instead of having those kind of red angled brackets, you do get these gray plates here. And then just like my Darth Vader one, I've put one hook in the center. I think definitely if you had two, it's gonna be a lot more secure. But for me personally, like that Darth Vader one's been hanging on one really well. The only time it's ever fallen was when I tried to hang this one up directly next to it, just to kind of see, admittedly, that there wasn't a lot of space and I knocked it off and it fell and I kind of had to rebuild it. Besides that, it's held very well. Like that's the only time that I've ever had an issue with it. Now one thing about this Harry Potter one in particular is the amount of leftover studs you get. Here are all of the ones that I did not use, including the leftover Technic pins and the other Technic bracket. This is a lot. You do not get as many left over with the Sith for example. That is my entire bag of leftover studs and it is a lot more empty. There's a lot more space in here, a lot more air. Kind of if I open it up and compress it down like there just isn't as much left over which I kind of like, I kind of appreciate, even though I do get why there are so many left over because obviously in Gryffindor, you're not gonna use the Ravenclaw blue. You're not gonna use the Slytherin green. So it makes sense. But to me, I feel like they should have done it as two separate ones. I feel like they should have sold Gryffindor and Hufflepuff separately in their own one and then Slytherin and Ravenclaw in another. That way you probably could have gotten a lower price point and you wouldn't have so many pieces left over. I mean, it's a great price per piece ratio, especially when you compare it to the Disney one. One, which barely has any leftover studs but at the same time they're all studs like not a lot of people are going to be able to find a use for them I know a few of them are quite expensive though stud wise like these gunmetal gray ones and these shiny silver they're definitely worth a lot more than say just a plain black or a plain white stud which is I guess all right but I just feel like there was so much wasted which is also very interesting considering the Harry Potter and Disney ones are $30 cheaper in Australia than the Sith ones. I know in the US the price remains the same at $120 but for us it ended up being cheaper which I find very strange. Admittedly these days you can find the Sith and the Iron Man for $130 for example on Amazon or Kmart. I can definitely say it's not what I expected. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily disappointed by it. I mean I guess it just could have been 
seen better. And I've said this before on live streams and things, Harry Potter has had a really good track record of making amazing sets. Like we've gotten the Great Hall and the Microsail Hogwarts and Diagon Alley. They are all amazing. They're some of the best sets we've ever gotten. And like a lot of themes, at some point you have to have a set or there will be a set, I should probably say, that is going to kind of disappoint you or just not be as good as the rest of them. And I feel like this Harry Potter art and even some of the books that released in January are probably that. It's definitely not the worst set ever. It's definitely not a bad set by any means. The personal enjoyment for me out of these art sets is the build process. I really enjoy it. I did this one with my mum again just like I did with the Sith one and it was very enjoyable. They make brilliant art pieces and I can see the value in it for that. Design wise, you know, it's it's not the best, it's fine. I personally would have preferred like a Gryffindor crest type of thing rather than this thing. And honestly, I'm gonna try and make a mock out of it where I do do a design like that, or even just kind of make my own Harry Potter design using or trying to use solely just the pieces that I got in the set. And when I do, I'll make a video on that and kind of show you guys, cause I personally would have preferred that. Then again, like I said, I like the kind of less in your face Harry Potter style of things. It's a bit more discreet. <laughs> So that's kind of yelling at you. I honestly prefer this to if they were to do Harry Potter's face. I feel like that would have been a bit creepy. So I'm glad they didn't go for that route. I honestly feel like getting two of these and making it like a massive Lego art where you'd build a mosaic of Hogwarts probably would have been the best option rather than a Hogwarts crest or individual house crests. Like sell a bigger Lego art set where you have to have two combined, kind of like you did with Mickey and Minnie, but make it just a bigger set in general, don't do these individual ones and make it Hogwarts. I think that would have sold and kind of gotten a better reception than this. And if they were ever to do another Lego art, that is what I would kind of suggest Lego do or what I think would make for the best looking art piece. Because I look back at the micro scale Hogwarts and that's what people love. They love the silhouette of Hogwarts. So overall, do I think this is a bad set? By no means. Do I think that it's the best Harry Potter set ever? Definitely not. I definitely think it is one of the weaker ones. Like at this price point, I would just rather buy, go out and buy the Great Hall if I didn't have it already, or even buy a second one maybe and mod it. I mean, I probably would rather have something else than a second Great Hall, but you kind of get what I mean. And for 4,249 pieces as well, yes, admittedly, they're all studs. It is a really good price per piece value and these art sets are just a fun, relaxing time in general. I really like building these. They're so much fun, so relaxing. It's just a great kind of family bonding activity. And you know, with the UK going back into a very strict lockdown, if you can get your hands on something like this, like this is a great thing to pass the time. Like this experience is borderline like a, building a puzzle, for example, or doing one of those diamond dots artworks. Like this is what that experience kind of relates to. This gives me puzzle energy, if that makes any sort of sense. I mean, if you've built a puzzle, you kind of get what I mean. You get that satisfaction of having a big picture at the end. And unlike a puzzle, you don't really have to take it apart if you don't want to. Like you can display this on your wall somewhere. And that's kind of where I would recommend this set. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone by no means, but I do kind of recommend it for just things like that. Otherwise, if you're not a big fan of artworks and puzzles and things like that, give this set a miss. You don't necessarily need it unless you're a completionist and something like that and love to have every single kind of Harry Potter set like myself. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below. That way you guys can see when I mod this and kind of create a mock out of it and try and make it a bit better. And until next time guys, I'll see you later.